Hey folks, your buddy Noodler coming at you one more time from our Blues Guitar Secret Headquarters here. Um, uh, I did a lesson a little while ago called uh, <coughs> Mixing the Major and Minor Pentatonic Scales where I introduced the idea of mixing the minor with the major pentatonic scales together with the flat five to create a sort of nine note palette from which we draw to play the blues and uh, um, just to recap quickly um, the idea here if you missed that lesson and you don't feel like going to watch it I'll show you this quickly I'm in the key of A I'm gonna assume you know the uh, A minor pentatonic scale all over the place this one we got five eight five seven five seven five seven five eight five eight right um, we add the flat five to that on the uh, uh, sixth fret of the A string and on the eighth fret of the, the G string here to get the blues scale as it's known. And then I showed you um, that uh, to find the major pentatonic the easiest thing to do is to just take your root note here which is the a note uh, presently on the uh, fifth fret of the the low e and drop it three frets towards the nut this way so five minus three is two so that takes you to the second fret you play that same minor pentatonic shape here and you are in fact now playing the a major pentatonic or you can it, it has two identities most scales have multiple identities you could look at this as F sharp minor pentatonic but in the key of A played over a A chord this is A major pentatonic and it's the same exact shape that we played here only you're playing it on the second fret so again the secret to finding it was simple I just dropped the root note one two three frets towards the nut um, you know, another way of looking at this is, a, is as a relative scale, in theory, and F sharp happens to be the sixth note of the A major scale, so, um, you know, that's a little theoretical tidbit that uh, explains a bit of the theory behind this. But at any rate, point being, you've got the minor pentatonic scale mapped out all over the neck, and now... All you got to do is drop that root note three notes or three frets towards the nut and you're playing the major pentatonic scale now. And what I showed you in that first lesson was how to mix both scales together, which is what we're primarily doing all the time when we're playing blues music. And, uh, you know, I think I showed you this riff. And I showed you the BB box as it's known up here um, so uh, I showed you those two little things and I think a bit of the intro to to, uh, to Johnny be good there which crosses both scales as you can see in here there and I was gonna expand a little bit on that little idea now I know that modern teaching uh, they've taken the pentatonic minor scale and the divvied it up into five different shapes and from what I understand this shape off the root on the on the uh, low E is considered shape number one and the shape we're concerned with today would be shape number two which in A would be So if you know, again, you've got to know the minor pentatonic all over the neck to get this lesson, all right? Or you could slow that down and follow me. The point I'm trying to get to anyway is that when you mix the major and the minor pentatonic scales to play blues licks, what you essentially get when you mix this, uh, the major, with the, with the minor is you get that position two box. Now, I'm playing in the key of A, and I'm playing... You know, the, the minor pentatonic box. Now, 
the second position of the a major pentatonic box happens to fall right here on top of of the minor pentatonic box right just like it, it is here if you were in the minor you know except you're doing it in the major so you can instantly see like you've heard this a million times So when you overlap the scales, what happens there is what would have been the fifth here in the minor becomes the third. So you're playing the third, you still got your root, and you get this nice sixth in there, um, or that's the fifth rather, not the root. Then you get the sixth in there, you got the root, and you got the two or, or the nine, depending on how you want to look at it. So when you put it all together, inside of or on top of, the minor pentatonic scale, you get this, right, um, with that major third in there, and then you throw in that that flat seven from the the minor uh, pentatonic scale, and it sounds groovy. So, right, and and that's. Essentially, if you think of that, if you remember, oh yeah, you know, you know this in the minor, if you're used to playing these kind of licks in A, then you just got to know that this box is the same thing in the major. So, um... Just to find more licks and, and, and utilize more thoroughly the idea of mixing both scales, I'm trying to get you used to a couple of concepts here. And one is that if you're used to this second position of the minor pentatonic, then you just got to know that, well, wait, the major works the same way. So here it is, and that's where the scales overlap. And that's how you get these, these groovy, these half steps. Right? They're all in there because, and this is something I noticed that you might find interesting. If I'm playing the major pentatonic scale, right? What I've picked up on is that on the bridge side of, of the scale, that is everything that happens between the bridge and this side of my hand, right? Um, the minor note is always one fret away. So I'm playing like if I'm in A major scale here and I go uh, on the G string from, from uh, frets 2 to 4, right, from the root to the second essentially, the minor pentatonic note that comes up next is the flat 3 and it's right there a half step away as it is on this string as it is on this string right the only place you don't really find it is here next to the root although arguably that note does get used especially in that ubiquitous Stevie Ray Vaughan turnaround lick where it bounces off the 2 or the 9 whichever way you want to look at it and then he bounces off this note the flat two right there next to the root note but uh, again I digress the whole point I was trying to make here is that on the bridge side of the, the major pentatonic scale invariably the, the minor notes right there like there this note is out of the major pentatonic scale and a half a step up there's a, a minor note this note's in the major pentatonic scale, and right there next to it, a half a step towards the bridge, is a minor note. And so on. Right? So, uh, that's a pretty interesting little thing. So you know that... That, that right, uh, you know, a half step towards the bridge from this side of the major pentatonic scale there's going to be a, a note in the minor right there 
So that makes it easier to picture licks and if you link it all together. Right? Um, you'll find licks that seem to fall into all kinds of different tonalities, right? Because you're, like I said before, you're playing with nine notes, which is, you know, two notes more than the usual, you know, metalhead, diatonic scale or whatever. You're actually dealing with more notes playing the blues. And uh, anything we can do to help us understand what's going on on the neck is useful. So I thought you might find that useful. Another tip is when you're playing like sort of country sounding licks, getting that nice twangy major thing happening, you're playing some blues. You um, you can just add the two notes that are missing to make this the major scale, right? Right, because right there um, uh, on the major pentatonic can be turned into the the major scale by just adding two notes. Two and seven. Right? Um, and I explained that in another lesson I did called Transforming Pentatonics. I'm not going to go through the whole, <coughs> the whole thing with you right here and now. But the point I was trying to make is that when you're playing with all, all these groovy um, sort of <coughs> major influence phrases using the major pentatonic scale on your blues, it doesn't hurt once in a while to actually throw in the the notes that that turn it the two notes that turn it from a pentatonic scale into the diatonic major scale. Anyway, that was a lot of wind to make that tiny little point, but I thought I would because it makes shit pretty interesting. Like you got your root note there, you could just go or you could go, which is the entire major scale. So from the root here, the A note on the G string, second fret, to the fourth fret, right, to the second fret, to the third, to the fifth, to the second, to the fourth, to the fifth. There's another, you know, typical uh, trick that you can do to try and just work these scales together. It's, it might not feel natural at first, but the whole point is, once you realize you have all these notes to draw from, you can start getting in and inventing some pretty cool phrases. So, you know, something I like to do is, say, start a phrase in the major pentatonic, and then finish it in the minor. Right? That phrase had a major third in it and a minor third. Crossbow scale sounds great. No problem. Just like... Right? Those notes make great passing tones. They add a lot of color, right? Um, you know, so uh, don't be afraid to try and work them in. And the more you see both scales at the same time, the easier you're going to find it to come up with licks. Like, right, I just made that shit up and it crossed both scales and I'll show it to you now. What did I do? I went, so I slid into the uh, major third G string, uh, sixth fret, I played the, the fifth here, B string, fifth fret, so I, and then I slid that G string from the 6th fret to the 4th fret here. Played the root note, uh, which is the G string 2nd fret. So like, And then I, I played um, this note, which is the F, the F sharp uh, on the 4th uh, fret of the D string. Right? And then back to the root, uh, G string 2nd fret. And then... Um, 
flat seven, D string fifth fret, and then hammer from three to four onto the major third there on the A string, and then there's the root, right? So. That's a lick that demonstrates pretty well everything I'm trying to put across is, is that you can is that all the opportunities are there to get really groovy bluesy sounding licks by just throwing in those mixed phrases with using both scales like this phrase. I'm hammering on to the uh, from flat three to major three, which is uh, in in the key of A on the high E from the uh, eighth string, eighth fret to the ninth, right? And then I play the root B string tenth fret, and then you can play the G string ninth fret, and that's your fifth. So that's the whole chord, right? Right. And then right here, um, you have this. I don't know which position of the, the pentatonic scale, minor scale, this is considered, but uh, either way, the lick is like. Right? So I've gone from here, um, eighth fret of the high E, which is the. Uh, the flat three and I've hammered from there one fret onto the major third played the root which is B strings 10th fret play the fifth which is G string ninth fret play the flat seven which is G string 12th fret and then I've hammered from uh, from the 10th fret to the 11th fret on the D string and that's the major third and then the root note A right here on the 12th fret Right? So you sort of get the idea of how you can crawl around inside these scales and you think about, you should really always be thinking about the intervals, okay, if you can. It's a good idea because the more you do, the easier it will be to lift licks later in life, right? If you think of the pentatonic minor scale, <coughs> you got a root, you got a flat three, you got a four, five, flat seven, that's it. Back to the to the A string, the octave. So so if you can know, remember in your head, you know, okay, root flat three, and if you know that that's the flat three, one fret up from that is always going to be the major third, right? Um, so, so you've got the you know the major third mapped out pretty well everywhere. You know where your fifth is. It's always got this. It's you know. It's good to know where the fifth is. You know that's the root on the high E, and the fifth is going to be on the B right above it. Just the same way you can predict that the fifth is going to be here from this root, and from this root it's here. Um, right. So where your root notes are and map out the intervals around that root. The third is always going to be right there. So here's my root. The major third is going to be one half a step towards the nut. This way. Right? Here's the root again. There's the major third. Here's the root again. There's the major third again. So that way you always know, hey, I want a major third. You know where the root is. Major third's right there. Fifth is always going to be in the same place, too. Right? Except there, you got the fifth above the... Anyway, point being, it's pretty easy to map out all these intervals and know where they are. And if you know that this is the root note on the high E, well, this is going to be this either the second or what people will call the ninth if it's in a chord and it's stacked up over a seven then it's a nine but you know we'll call it either two or nine but the point is you know that's the root that's the next note and if you know that's the major third or the minor third just like this is and this is right behind it 
right? And if you know that that's the fifth, well, this is going to be the sixth and the flat seven. It's a good idea to know all of these things, which is why when I'm teaching you licks, I always say, now I'm playing the flat seven, I'm playing the three before I give you the fret and string numbers, because I'm trying to get you to cop that and just insinuate it into your vocabulary, because you can describe a riff over the frickin' phone to somebody that way. You can say, well, I just play, I slide up to the, to the fifth, and then I play the play the flat seven and then I and then I uh, bounce on to the major third and hit the root right you could you could tell me that riff over the phone I could play it right back for you it's good shit to know it's extremely useful and as the more your ears get used to these intervals the easier it'll be for you to cop licks from from uh, you know music that you're listening to and other players and stuff now um, Another cool thing about mixing the two scales, major and minor pentatonic, is you get all these great dissonant dyads out of it, right? Because as I explained earlier, almost invariably, if you play a note in the major pentatonic, the next half step up is going to be a note from the minor pentatonic. So you play a little double stop and put one behind the other, you're going to get that kind of shit going. I think I showed you this in my useful stock blues licks lessons. I don't know whether anybody watches them all, but I'm, I'm going to pretend you do for the sake of brevity here. And you got this groovy little sliding dyad lick in A, where I'm sliding up to the fifth, ninth fret, G string, and I'm playing the uh, flat seven, eighth fret, B string, and I'm sliding them up to the. Well, you can just. Just keep going. And now I'm basically playing the, a D, like the, the triad shape for the D. So if you're playing the blues. The other that just reminded me of something that I want to show you. I know this is another one of my lengthy rambling lessons that uh, I didn't have a plan when I started. Um, but I wanted to show you uh, uh, something that's related, which is is knowing your uh, dominant seventh arpeggios, even though arguably these notes are already there when you mix the major and minor pentatonic scales. In fact, a lot of notes are already there when you mix the two with the flat five. As I said before, you got nine notes to work with, which is two more than the usual metalhead diatonic scale they're also proud of. Um, um, so these notes do appear amongst those notes, but the concept is something you should probably think about separately because a lot of notes appear in them. You could, you, you know, you could carve Dorian and Mixolydian modes out of it, and everything else, or Mixolydian, Mixolydian modes out of it, out of those nine notes too. So there's a lot of flavors hidden in there, and you kind of have to uh, bring them out by picking your phrases, right? Um, so uh, the arpeggio, anyway, I was going to get to the dominant seventh. Usually we're playing dominant seventh chords when we're playing the blues you know it's generally a major blues anyway it's three dominant chords in a row so the dominant seventh arpeggio is something that you you can use to anchor your riffs to the melody to the harmony a little more so it instantly sounds a little more musical and without any further ado here's a, a dominant seventh arpeggio in in the key of a starting on the low e root note so i'm playing fifth fret low e i'm playing fourth fret a i'm playing seventh fret a right and now there's the flat seven d string fifth 
fret and that's the whole arpeggio and then it starts again you play the root note and this is an interesting part you play the root note on the D string uh, seventh fret and then you're playing the major third here on the G string on the sixth fret you're playing the fifth on the B string at the fifth fret you're playing the flat seven here on the eighth fret of the B you're playing the root again you're starting again here root on the uh, high E the fifth fret and then you want to stretch it out to the ninth fret and get that um, major third me now I know it doesn't sound a whole very bluesy or musical just playing it like that um, but what I want you to do is you know sit in front of your favorite jam track or whatever and just try to play those arpeggio notes um, and and make something melodic out of it and what you can do and what most people do is, you know, most people um, will slide into like the major third from from a fret behind, so. right? Right. And it instantly starts to sound a little bluesier, right? So you you mix that that up with a, a little bit of just straight ass minor pentatonic riffage um, a little major pentatonic tickling and all of a sudden you're sounding super bluesy and you've got a lot more uh, flavor in your in your bag than just the straight minor pentatonic scale offers although I mean you know you can do a lot with just it you know, there's nothing wrong with it I love it you know I've played it for years and years But you, eventually, you're gonna need want that. Anyhow, I'm just noodling because I'm super indulgent today for some reason. But point being, that's the the uh, the dominant. Seventh arpeggio off the uh, the low E um, root, and I'll show you um, a dominant seventh arpeggio off the A root, because then you can do it over the D and slide it up and do the same thing over E. I mean, hopefully you're used to that kind of concept because they're right there and they're both things are going to be the same. Just move. So you play the root on the A string, uh, fifth fret. This is going to be a D dominant seventh ar arpeggio. So I'm playing, uh, yeah, fifth fret A string. There's your root. Major third is is your uh, fourth fret D string. The fifth is going to be uh, your fifth fret uh, D string. So, and then you're going to play um, the G string on the fifth fret to get the uh, the flat seven of D. And then there's the root. The tricky part of this arpeggio is the next note is going to be the seventh fret of the B string, and that's the only note on the B string you're going to play. You're going to go, and then you're going to play the A note right here on the fifth fret, um, uh, high E. Um, so, right, and then uh, you can you can play. Play the C note here on the uh, eighth fret of the high E, and the D notes up there. Right, and that's your, and you can, and you know, take the shit for E. Right, um, and. 
that will give you, you know, um, the, the chord tones you're looking for to, to anchor your, your riffs to the harmony and just sound a whole lot more musical. And, you know, at first you're going to feel, you know, like I said, it feels a little awkward at first and you're like, I don't know whether this is going to work. But eventually the idea is you mesh this stuff in. It seeps into your subconscious. This whole idea of the major pentatonic and where it overlaps the minor. This idea of the arpeggios coming in. So that way, you know, when you when you're marking the changes, it sounds pretty damn slick. You know, people their ears will go, man, this guy apparently knows knows what key he's fucking in and what changes he's playing over. Um, so it's not just mindless wankery, um, because it is super important to to. Uh, to acknowledge the harmony underneath of what you're playing, um, it, it just immediately can turn turn you know your mundane noodling into something that sounds pretty frickin' musical. I mean, it's hard hard to argue with notes out of the chord you're playing over. It, you really you can't beat that. Now, um, I wonder if there was anything else I had to add to you today about that kind of stuff about this whole mixing of the major and minor pentatonic scale. Yeah, I try to explain this, the, the, the first lesson I did on this, and I don't think I did a very good job. Now, you know, I showed you how to find the major pentatonic scale, and there's something I noticed, like, we're playing, uh, you know, again, I, I'm not used to this five position thinking, but I'm going to use it in this lesson because I know a lot of people are, and it actually seems to make pretty good sense to me. So this position one position of the major pentatonic scale looks like, you know, it's the old, just move down here. So we know that as position one. And here's something interesting to know that'll help you find it in other parts of the neck, just to help you navigate. There's the A chord, right? On the second fret, the one we're all used to. Some people play each note like this. I just bar it with my index finger. But the point I'm making here is you play that chord um, anywhere on the neck, the A shape out of the cage system, shape chord just like this you'll note that uh, the major pentatonic is right there like there's your root note in the A chord it's right there on the G string second fret so if I was to play this C chord then that would be the C root right so I'm playing that you got that root on the on the G string if you got your root on the G string then a full step up is is the bender there because that position one of the major pentatonic scale is always is always going to be right there next to the A shape chords that are, have a root on the on the A string. I hope that makes sense to you. The point being, if you're playing any A-shape uh, bar chord uh, out of the cage system, that that right next to it is the, is position one of the major pentatonic scale. So you play this A-shape chord, and you can just slide a full step up and start. Okay, so that makes it super. You don't even have to know. You don't have to do the calculations in your head. You're just going, okay, I'm playing this bar chord, whatever it is. I know the scales here. I don't even have to think about it, right? Right? Um, so that's a useful uh, thing, you know, a uh, way to think about about the neck when you're navigating around. The neck is so 
it's a, in standard anyway in standard tuning which is frankly the only tuning I'm used to um, you can utilize the guitar itself to help you get around and I'm sure you can do that in other tunings as soon as you map them out which is which is why learning your interval intervals rather is so important and I mentioned that earlier to you now I mean generally speaking we're playing bar chords we're either playing those A shapes off the off the off the A root note or we're playing the E shape bar chord off the low the low E root note now when you play uh, one of those chords right so like for instance this G chord the uh, major pentatonic over G happens to be E minor pentatonic so so and if you know and and this is where people get confused because Here's the E minor uh, pentatonic scale off of the, the A root note. You would play the root here on the 7th fret of the A string, and then you would go to the 10th fret of the A string, 7th fret of the D string, <coughs> 9th fret of the D string, 7th fret of the G string, 9th fret of the G string, um, 8th fret of the B string, 10th fret of the B string, 7th fret of the high E, 10th fret of the high E. Right? But, you know, the way I learned this scale way back in the day of, you know, Mel Bay books and phonograph records when the phone was attached to the wall, um, I learned that scale with this little box in front of it. So, um, I'm going to show you that right now, so you know this much. You can also play on the D and A and, and low E strings, the 5th fret, right? Just tack those notes onto that. Important that you, it's important that you learn this not only because there's a lot of good riffs in there that, that um, but because it will help you understand this rule that I'm trying to explain which is that I'm playing the G chord or any chord off the the low um, E root note, any bar chord, then that little box is right there, like a half step away or a full step, right? So that's um, another way of getting those licks in there, and it makes perfect sense because if I was playing the this, I, that's all I'm doing and actually is playing those two notes on top of this box, right? I'm bouncing off the sixth, which is the root note of the major pentatonic scale when you're doing this. see what I'm saying I hope you do um, I'm kind of long-winded and, and uh, verbose today for some reason I think it's frankly because I haven't had enough coffee curiously enough and uh, now I'm jonesing for a cigarette which is really unseemly sort of pariah behavior in this modern day and age but what can I tell you I'm an old man I I don't have a lot of vices left so you know but I'll tell you right now if you don't smoke cigarettes, don't ever start because it's a horrible, smelly habit. And now, I'm a freaking pariah. Like, I have to walk around with chewing gum and stuff so I don't smell like an ashtray. 
people will recoil from you on the on the public transit because you smell like like a fucking tobacco air wick if you're wearing a parka and you didn't smoke anyway i digress yet again um was there anything else i could possibly tell you about this whole phenomena of mixing the major and minor pentatonic scale um, sorry, I'm trying to think if there's any actual other licks or something fun or fancy I could show you. Yeah, that's sort of a fun, interesting thing because you have the two scales mixed together. I'll, sometimes I'll make little sliding dyads out of them. Um, just right. You know, like that. Um, yeah, there's a lick I'll show you. I mean, who cares what scales we're talking about? So what I'm doing there is I'm playing the uh, B string 10th fret where I'm in the key of A incidentally. So this is the root note. And I'm playing the major third here on the, uh, the ninth fret of the high E. And then I take that little shape and I slide it a whole step down here. So now I'm on the, uh, the, uh, the eighth fret of the B and the seventh fret of the high E. So... And now I'm on the uh, seventh fret of the B and the, the fifth fret of the high E, right? Now my uh, B string, I'm playing fifth fret, high E, third fret. And then I'm playing the third fret of the B and the second fret of the high E. And then I'm playing the first fret of the, the B string and the high E open and giving it a little... So all together you got finish it off on the the root note, the A string or the A note, uh, uh, G string second fret, and there you go. That's a pretty cool little lick, right? So there you go. I think I've uh, you know I've monopolized enough of your time, and I hope you learned something from all this gibbering and. And yammering and whatnot. So uh, have a good one. We'll see you soon.